Good afternoon, preppers. Welcome to Goshen Prepping. Understand, and I think most people do, that protection for you and your family is a top priority when it comes to prepping. You can go and stockpile all you want to, but unless you actually have protection to stay alive, what's it worth? And that's even more true today, even like this new year that just started than ever, because I just saw an article in the Washington Times, and time is short and growing shorter. And this, this article alarmed me, and that's why I'm saying this. So let's go ahead and jump right into the article. Violent crime rises as police struggle. And it's interesting. We have a drop in nationwide homicide rates, but brutality on the streets increases drastically. Now, instead of actually showing the, the paper itself and actually highlighting it, I made some cards. But I want you to understand the numbers and conclusions drawn in this article may shock you. It did me. In Chicago, homicides are down 14%. Violent crimes are up 41%. New York, homicides down 13%. Violent crimes up 23%. LA, homicides down 6%. Violent crimes up 8%. In one year, studies show that in 29 major US cities, overall homicides are down 2%, aggravated assaults up 4%, and robberies up 19%. Now, the analysts said they couldn't narrow it down to one specific thing, but instead actually show a combination of things. Here's three things that's probably leading to this. First, fewer officers. Also, we mentioned this before, soft on crime prosecutors and then social stressors. Social stressors include specifically the economy and inflation. Now, because of the fewer officers, they know that police officers are quitting in droves due to low morale. And it's interesting, a couple of days ago, I mentioned defund the police and one of the followers of the channel said, oh, that was years ago. No, the ramifications are still there. In Philadelphia, there's been a 10% decrease in officers since 2019. It's expected to drop 13% more in the next two years. In New York, 4,000 officers walked off the job in 2022 alone, 4,000. And that's a 42% increase who left in 2021. San Diego, 230 officers left the departments in 2022, and that's a 52% increase from 2021. So in short, especially in cities, we're looking at a lack of manpower in the police force. In consequence, homicides, rapes, serious crimes are often investigated, while the others, they're simply just pushed, pushed aside. Robberies, burglaries, and assaults are not given priority. And in some cities, it's so bad that officers won't even respond to those. In Philadelphia, in the last week of December, armed robberies were up 22%. Overall, robberies are up 12%. Property crimes up 29%. In New York, robberies are up 26%. Felony assaults up 13%. And overall, 23% increase in violent crime. And the reason behind all this, analysts believe the main probable cause is inflation. I don't know if you know, but we're actually at a 40-year high. It actually been, hasn't been this high in over 40 years. Interesting. And they said specifically that inflation is from three things. High prices brought on by government splurging. And of course, we just dropped another $1.3 trillion bill. It's ridiculous. Tight supply chains and Russia invading Ukraine. They're saying that is actually causing consumers to use more of the black market increasing assaults, robberies, and shoplifting. The National Retail Foundation noted there's been 94.5 billion lost in shoplifting in 2022, and that's a 26.5% increase from last year. Research is showing that inflation alone is significantly increasing homicide, violent crime, robbery, and burglary. They said that overall, especially in the last two years, the U.S. has seen a massive surge in violence. For the longest time, violence in America has been going down, and now it's surging back quickly. They said that the lack, there's a simply a lack of respect for life. I've seen this too. How about you? More people are being shoved and beaten and a lot more strangers simply just attacking other strangers, people they don't even know. And there's no better time than right now to protect yourself. And of course, there's many ways to do that. Of course, we're talking about prepping here. We got to be able to prepare for what's coming. A lot of people talk about these and that is true, but there's all kinds of different types of weapons that you can actually get hand weapons like uh, stun guns and such. But even more so, I would actually recommend you take some self-defense courses, some martial arts. It would actually help out tremendously to be able to protect you and your family. There's no better time than to do that right now. Thanks for watching.